Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Damien's Midweek Markets, the show where I talk about what's been going on in investment markets and what to look out for in the week ahead. Now, last week, you will recall that I started the show by talking about the pound and it was almost a kiss of death for the currency because this week we saw the pound tumble to a 27 month low and have the largest fall in a single day that we've seen since March and the pound against the dollar fell to $1.24. Now that was because the two candidates running to be the next prime minister both seem to be competing in how aggressive they can be over Brexit. So the likelihood now of a no deal Brexit is increasing. So the market reacted to that by selling off the pound and actually there's been more and more bets, more short positions being put on the pound in recent weeks than we've seen for some time. And of course, it's causing the pound to tumble. Now, the good news for investors is that if you'd looked at your portfolio at the start of the week versus now, you would have seen anything that had exposure to overseas, no matter what it was, would have benefited from a currency boost. And you've also seen probably the large cap stocks you've got. So the FTSE 100 trackers have had a boost as well from a weakening pound. Now, that will mask some of the other stuff you've seen going on, but that will feel like a positive. Now, globally, equity markets have kind of stalled, really. We've sat there near those all-time highs in the US. We're over 3,000 now on the S&P 500. And the market is meandering. It's looking for a direction. And one of the reasons it's kind of lost and stuck in limbo at the moment is because of earnings season. Now, earnings seasons in the US and across Europe and in the UK are going to be important. And the reason is, I mentioned this to 8020 investor members last week and did a lot of analysis. Now, if you want to see any of that analysis, you can sign up and get a free trial. But I was talking about the importance of the rally and the sectors within it that are driving those rallies. So previously we've seen, say in September 2018, we saw the technology stocks pushing the market higher. They've been driving a lot of the rally we've seen in the last two years, in fact, since Trump came into power. Now, since the sell-off in October and into December, while tech stocks have rebounded coming into 2019, they've not performed as well and hit all-time highs, new all-time highs, until last week, so very recently. And it means the rally in the wider indices has been driven by defensive sectors. So that shows you there is an air of caution among equity investors, where they're investing in things like utilities, which have been performing particularly well, like REIT, so real estate investment trust. So they've been doing very well. Now, what we've seen is some of the other more cyclical sectors, sectors that are more exposed to the well-being of the economy, start to perform well. We had new all-time highs in technology stocks and other important sectors that are exposed to the economy, particularly in the US. And I talk about those, as I say, for 8020 investor members, and I talk about those to keep an eye on and where you can keep an eye on those because they may give you an indication whether this equity rally has got legs. Now, going into earnings season, we started seeing some of the bank's earnings this week. And of course, banks are a good bellwether of the economy and how well the consumer is doing and how bullish they are. And their earnings, we had some at the beginning of the week from some of the important investment banks, and they've held up. It's nothing exhilarating or exciting, nothing going to blow the doors off, but they weren't terrible. But the important thing is, in the coming weeks, we're going to see some key players, some key sectors start to release their earnings. So we want to see how the automakers will do, how are the healthcare stocks going to do, because they're most exposed to the Chinese-US trade war. And if they do badly, then it could mean that the equity rally could start to stall. Now, this week, we're seeing some earnings from two tech giants, so Netflix and Microsoft. Now, they're going to be interesting to see how the market reacts, because in terms of Netflix, it's all about growth. It's a growth story. So are people now willing to keep paying these lofty valuations for something like Netflix? So what you want to see is see how good their results are and how the market reacts. Then we've got Microsoft, slightly different, because it's more about quality and the quality of the earnings. So if the market reacts favorably to those earnings that they report and if they're strong then it can mean or could possibly mean that we may see some more upward momentum build within equity markets as those important tech sectors that haven't been driving the rally recently start to pick up some of the slack. So looking even further forward then some key earnings to keep an eye on are Google and Amazon. 
who released their earnings on around the 25th of the month. And then towards the end of the month, we've got Apple. So some big names out there that are gonna be probably impacted by the trade war, but also give some insight into what consumers are doing and thinking. But of course, all of this is goes against a backdrop of this wall of worry. We've still got the trade war trundling on. Trump has now come out and said he's not opposed to the idea of actually putting some more tariffs on China. And so he's starting to antagonize them again. He's still talking about other countries maybe imposing trade tariffs as well. So there's a lot of headwinds still out there. There are some poor economic numbers we're still seeing, but of course they're mixed up with some positive ones. We have some good ones on US retail sales that started to give everybody a bit of a boost. But fundamentally, despite all of this, it's still coming down to what central banks do. And so at the end of this month, we're still gonna be talking about it in the coming weeks. What will the Fed do? Will they cut interest rates? Because that is what people are betting on and what is really driving markets higher. But what is interesting, I'm gonna finish on one final thought. We talk about divergences, so the bond market and the equity market, almost diverging. And by that, I mean they both rally in the same direction. But if you look at the 10-year treasury yield, the yield's been falling, almost that people were buying bonds worried about the economic outlook yet at the same time equities were rallying almost that everything was awesome but it's been driven by QE by what banks might do maybe cutting interest rates but we started to see bond markets weaken slightly so maybe those jaws of divergence might snap shut but it may be bond markets are the ones that get hit the hardest we don't know yet something to keep an eye on for future weeks. Now, that is it for this week. If you want to get hold of me, then you can do so in the usual ways, Damien at moneytothemasses.com or via Twitter, money to the masses with the number two. <laughs>